leg out. I'm sick. I'm torched. I'm not feeling motivated and my work is killing me. So well, let's do a show. Why not, right? We're going to hit a few clips, a couple articles, none of which will be of interest to you. So keep on scrolling by. There's nothing here for you. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Cat in a hat getting censored. I, uh, well, we'll get into that later. But uh, be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Dr. Seuss. Now, am I getting trolled or is this a real quote? I've seen this quote before. <sighs> the Bible is next. <laughs> right? Barnes and Noble, Amazon, and the like. Next gen <laughs> thing you know, the Bible is going to be banned from stores because it's obviously hate speech and racist. Right. And don't not to mention um, it, it disinformation. If you put it on YouTube, they'll shut you down for disinformation. I was shut down for disinformation for carrying the Trump speech two days after it was live. It's CPAC. It's not copyrighted. Deceptive practices for a Trump speech at CPAC. <sighs> I even checked, like, I mean, it was on a hundred channels. I haven't checked to see that it's still on those hundred channels, but it was on Fox's channel. <laughs> Another strike. So you're probably watching me. If you're watching me on YouTube, you're watching the Jim, Jim Fannin show, the page on Jim Fannin show with 40 subs instead of true tube where I normally broadcast from uh, with 170 on subs, which is good for me considering the channel's only five months old. And the sixth channel, since they cut me. Anyways, we're not going through that again, are we? <laughs> I thought if there was a third accuser, this guy was going to have to kiss it. Kiss his job goodbye, that is. Third woman accuses Cuomo. Says he has to kiss her. Now, I loathe this man. Is loathe the right word? I don't hate him. He, to me, is super cringeworthy, opportunistic, and theatrical drama queen. And I think he plays mobster way too much with the, with the New York accent and the, and the Italian thing going on, you know? So, yeah, he drives me nuts. I, I don't like the decisions he made during flu season when he put way too many elderly at risk and actually killed more than necessary by putting infected patients in old age homes. Well, where was the line of thought? Where was the train of thought? Where'd that come from and why? I do not like this man at all. I think he's a creep. And I'm not talking about the sexual allegations. I mean, just uh, up until the point where he was accused, I think he's a goof. And I do not use that word lightly. He's a goof to me. I am very critical and uh, my judgment is unforgiving. It's something I'm working on. <laughs> I, I'm not... Uh, I'm not doing well with it. Let's I'm working on it, but it's I'm not I'm not making any progress to to speak of. Anyway, he came out and apologized the other day. He said straight up, "I have never inappropriately touched anyone." Well, I guess it depends on what you call inappropriate. And I'm not saying that he hasn't I guess that'll all come out, although the DA that's investigating it is in Cuomo's pocket or whoever's going to be investigating it. His tentacles go way too deep in New York. You can't find an unbiased AG or somebody to look into this, can you? Third woman accuses Cuomo, says he asked to kiss her. 
Well, you know what? <laughs> that's how he gets dates, maybe. Maybe that's his line. Like, if I didn't ask women if I could kiss them, I'd never get any dates. Because <laughs> that's, that's how I roll. Sitting having coffee, you know, first date, getting to know the girl, lean in. Hey, come here, come here. I, wanna, I don't want to say this too loud. Lean in. Here. Can I kiss you right now? <laughs> it's fucking, it works every time. <laughs> Anyway, I saw his press conference when she came out stock, talking about COVID. And then he said, let me address the allegations against me. And among other things, he said, I've never inappropriately touched anyone. Now, I think he's talking about like staffers, people on his campaign. Or maybe it means in general. I don't know. What's inappropriately touching someone? Making a move when they don't want you to make a move? Grabbing them by the neck? <laughs> or the small of their back and pulling them close? I guess. Anything that's unwanted, I guess, is inappropriate. Here's the thing. And I don't take the shit lightly I believe him <laughs> I actually like I, hey I'd be the first guy to say this guy's a piece of garbage right but I believe him when he says he's never inappropriately touched anyone on his staff I believe him when he says yeah you know what I, I kiss people I hug people it's, it's, it's what I do I'm Italian you know I kiss him on both cheeks I grab him by the the face I mean what's a more intimate like, I mean, if you really care for someone, especially if you're trying to get a message through to them and you've got that type of relationship, what's more intimate and effective at getting their attention than holding their head in your hands? I mean, there's not, you know, if try it out. When you've got something really important to say to your kid or to your husband, none of which, <laughs> your partner, whoever, try it. Like, I haven't done it in a long time, but I used to do it on the regular because it matters. It's connectedness. Sometimes you need to cut through the bullshit. And if you're in a relationship with someone and there's love there, then it, sh it should convey that. Now, grabbing someone by the head at, you know, someone you barely know at a wedding and asking them if you could kiss them Okay, maybe inappropriate. Maybe, um, I don't know, what's another word for it? Creepy? And I'm not saying that's right. Every, every person has their way of, like he's single, of approaching women, I guess. If you have any game at all, unless you just always wait back, sit back and wait for it to happen to you, and it never does, like sometimes you got to get out of your chair and walk across a room and say, Hey, I'm Jim. <laughs> or you just ask them to marry you on Twitter like I do. I wonder how many outstanding marriage proposals I've got on Twitter. Probably a few. None ever accepted, I don't think. I have to go back. So anyways, this guy comes out and he defends himself. I'm not defending him, but I, I'm saying so far, and I've been fooled before, and I'm not saying don't believe women. Huh? The woman right here says, Anna Ruck. Like, you don't put yourself in the limelight like this for no reason. Well, how come they didn't come before the election is what I want to know? Oh, she worked on the Biden campaign. <laughs> well, that's rich. Well, this is, this is the one that put, uh, he put his hand on his back. 
she promptly removed his hand which I thought would be a clear enough indicator that I was not wanting him to touch me. Cuomo called her aggressive and placed his hands on her cheeks and said, can I kiss you? Well, is that sexual assault? Or is that just a dude work in the room in a creepy like fashion? I, not my approach, but anyway. He's just a creepy old man, a dated, creepy, inappropriate old man. But is he a sexual harasser because of this? I don't know. Anyway, I've been fooled before. Uh, Christine Blasey Ford fooled me. Like when she when she testified against Judge Kavanaugh, I was like, oh, geez, this is horrible. How can you not have empathy? Well, I guess you can't have empathy, but sympathy for a woman. Oh, she was good, man. I don't believe anything she said now, but in the moment when I was watching her, I was completely moved and convinced that she was truthful. And now, like I said, I don't believe a word she said. I believed Cuomo the other night. When he come up, or the other day, when he uh, did his press conference. And I'm not saying that, I'm not saying anything about that. I'm just saying he sounded believable to me. So that's all I know. Thank you. And I'm happy to take questions if that's what I'm supposed to do, Nance, whatever you want me to do. Thank you, thank you. And I'm happy to take questions if that's what I'm supposed to do, Nance, whatever you want me to do. Okay, so thank that you, was Biden. You. Um, what happened? Um, <laughs> the White House cut his feed. Uh, Nancy Pelosi was the second shot in the room there. That it's not showing in this clip and he that's who he refers to as nance nancy pelosi she was at the other end of this call and uh the white house just canned him he he really hasn't done a press conference himself since he was elected what is going on at the white house man nothing good what up, Twitter? Uh, Periscope, um, still broadcasting at Jim Fannin. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, what up, fake book? Uh, Twitch, D Live, and YouTube on the Jim Fannin Show page. I have been putting up pre recorded segments here and there. I did a couple this week, uh, working on a couple interviews I didn't want to jinx at the time. Uh, but Thursday nights at 7 p.m., I try and get my ass out here even if I'm sick, ruined, uh, unmotivated, and in massive pain. <laughs> I got out to see my Faja today. Man, I give the old man a hug. It was too long. It's bullshit. I got this new hoodie at, um, oh, what was it, uh, Giant Ticker? <clears throat> don't you know it's got a neck gaiter in it that pulls up it's like microfiber uh spandex goes wraps around your whole face goes over your head if you wanted to it's fucking awesome because it doesn't hold germs like you breathe right through it it's not a it's fucking ugh, those masks are gross yeah i got to see my father today way too long Uh, this is where you find me on Facebook. What do we got going on on Facebook? Oh, the Bible's next. This is a good one. This is a, uh, this was on Crowder. There's a swab in my thingaboo, a thingamaboo. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote that? And then I had to come back. I had, I had to. Uh, this is a classic. <laughs> Before and after, <laughs> they fuzzed it out. <laughs> oh, the places you'll go. And just don't tell your parents. <laughs> Crowder's classic. 
He's on every morning on YouTube. He's doing a free show. Carol Ann, thanks for this. You are my inspiration uh, for the start of the show today. It just came in just before I went live. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, this is Kyle Dunnigan. Um, I'm not going to play the whole thing because, well, it's his material, and I don't want to get accused of ripping it off, but I, I do member of this channel. No, I am already subscribed, right? Oh, no. Uh, oh, no, I can't. Okay, good. All right, so I'm just going to go through to... <laughs> Um, I don't, uh, this is still my, and this is funny. You got to check it out. Cuomo, it, it's brand new. Just search Kyle Dunnigan, okay? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> the guy is hilarious, and he does these virtual masks that are bang on. His impressions are pretty tight, too. Let me see if I can pull up this line here. I've had a few. But then again, too few to mention. Good story. My grandfather used to talk. He killed a bunch of old people. Okay. That is all the time we have today. Oh, uh, where is it? Oh, words were, please don't touch me. I said, relax. I'm embarrassed. But, I oh, can't I find it. That girl. I, should ha I should have it. Again, I don't, I'm not going to play too much of this because... <laughs> I should have the timestamp. I'm sorry. I'm just super unprepared. <laughs> But you got you got to watch this. It's only a couple minutes. Two fourteen. Regrets. I've had a few. My grandfather used to tuck his genitalia underneath. Oh, oh it looked no, like a no. genitalia underneath Anyways, himself. I can't find it. It's uh, it's here, and I don't want to play too much of this because it's his material, and I don't want to get a copyright strike or something. So, <laughs> go check out Kyle Town again. Okay, Terrence K is live. Uh, judge orders new election after 78% of mail-in ballots found invalid. Notary arrested. Oh, I could have that a little clear for you. Right? The Epic Times. Oh, here it is. Here's another one. WCBI.com. Judge orders new election for Ward 1 Democrat runoff in Aberdeen. This is heartbreaking right here. This is the bio of 100 people that have killed themselves during the pandemic with opioids. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. Oh, fuck. Nobody wants to talk about it, but a huge problem. What up, Ren? Thank you, brother. Uh, got Jordan Peterson's new book. It's called Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life. Be grateful in spite of your suffering. Mm. Rule 12. The final rule. I haven't got there yet, but it's increasingly difficult to listen to Jordan Peterson read his own book, like narrate his own book while he's half dead. And I mean half dead. Like, dude's been through hell and back over the last couple of years. And so he does not sound good, but uh, some chapters are better than others. This is, <laughs> this is, this is deep fake ugliness. <laughs> I can't even see it. I'm not doing well with the cuts today, am I? Uh, Laura and fucking... Whatever his name is. That Polish guy. <laughs> Check out my boy Josh Mills. Saturday, 12 p.m. EST. It's a free online broadcast. Don't stop the music. And Talented Singers Live Facebook page. See my Facebook page for more comments or more details. Go Mills. Mills is on a roll. Mills is on fire. Mills has some songs in the can. Mills is recording again. Mills is releasing an album. Mills is performing. Josh Mills does not suck. He's fat. 
he's a bastard. He's known as the fat bastard, but he's a pretty good musician. Grant Flesh blocked me after this. Oh, Grant. Oh, you're... Oh, we were... We, oh, Grant, why did you block me? Just because I tagged you in a tweet? In a post? Oh, Grant, I'm hurt. Grant has blocked accounts that he shouldn't even know I control on Twitter. It took him a long time to get around to blocking me on, uh, what's it called? Lisa, Alicia Herder, age here on uh, Facebook. Chrome, artistic barbering, is her business. Jerry Egg R interviewed her on News Talk 610. They talked about Grand Flesh, which you can't see here. And Sandor Ligafalti. Ligat Falti. Ligat Falvi. Shandor Ligat. Ligat. Wait, let's do this. Shandor Ligafalti. No. Ligat Falvi. Yeah. Shandor Ligat Falvi. There we go. I got it. <laughs> uh, do I need to play this for you? I. It's nine We're minutes back long. to the Jerry Agar show on the what I was doing from the start and there was a lot of malicious <laughs> defamatory articles published from the get-go and it really it really turned public um, opinion against what I was doing um, I, I've got a, a this is this is in the works right now but I mean I've got a lawsuit going against this I've got to go find me right now to protect myself against this it's been bad he started it eventually leading to an article who started being, it um grant massage from the from the standard um, now she he, she did say she didn't name him at first in this interview but then agar comes back and said who who started it and so then she finally was she finally pulled the plug on it. So this was a nine-minute interview that went off this morning on 1010 uh, CFRB, the sister station to our own local 610 CKTB, who will not touch this story with a 10-foot pole. I could be wrong. I don't listen to the station anymore. I find it unlistenable. Uh, the talent on that station is, well, not very talented. Uh, so I don't listen to the station. But I haven't seen anything. Usually, it'll, something will come across my feed on the Facebook because they're a they're news station, right? So I do see some of their stuff. I just don't listen to the station. And uh, I bet you any money they haven't done anything on this story. But Jerry Agar saw it because uh, Joe Warmington, yeah, Joe Warmington picked it up. And then Jerry Agar picked it up after he did. I clipped it. I posted it on my Jim Fannin Show True uh, YouTube page. TrueTube is in the box again, as I said earlier. I think we already talked about it. The TrueTube channel on YouTube is in the box because I posted, I live streamed Donald Trump's CPAC uh, speech. It's an hour and a half long. It's on hundreds of other channels, but I got the X. It was removed and appealed and rejected appeal somehow i got i figured out how to appeal it again well, we'll see how that goes it, so i can't broadcast live i can't upload for another six days which is why we have two accounts so we can oscillate is that the proper word back and forth and always have something going live on youtube even when i'm in the penalty box with one of the channels so you can check this out. I'm gonna, not going to play the whole interview. Uh, Grant LaFleur, here's the story if you don't know it. Grant LaFleur accused Alicia, the owner of the the uh, barbershop turned uh, film studio. Now she's doing podcasts from her chair. So you come in, you audition, you do a, you do a, you do your little segment, and what they're going to do probably is some form of reality show where you're wired for sound, you get your hair cut, and it's public, and it goes out broadcast. Like, people watch Stranger Things. So during the flu season that we're coming out of now, uh, Alicia Herder went 
and said, okay, well, I'm a, I'm a film studio now. I'm doing a podcast in addition to doing hair. And she continued to stay open through the lockdown and that she was targeted by the media, namely Grant LaFleche and his editor, Scott. What's his name? Something Scott. Yeah, he, he's approving this stuff. Uh, Angus Scott, is it? Yeah, he uh, is pretty much a hands-off editor at the, at the paper because uh, pretty much Grant LaFleche runs the show, it seems. So he defamed her by saying that Alicia had called for the murder and the beheading of Dr. Hirji. She never did such a thing. It's absolutely ridiculous that a comment on one of her posts, somebody said, what did it say? Put his head on a spike or something. Like, not the most peaceful phrase, but obviously a metaphor for fuck that guy. Nobody puts heads on spikes anymore. We're not calling for someone to get their head on a spike. It's a euphemism. Is that? Is is it? I don't know. A metaphor? Uh, A bad? I don't know. So you can go check it out. Uh, Check my mouth. This is uh, Jen Psaki. And Jen Psaki is going to respond to a reporter's question of the use Neanderthal. This is her response. Any second thoughts about the language that he used yesterday and how does comparing someone to a Neanderthal Look at help that face. convince them to what change a course and get on board with your public health Little. Message? The behavior of a Neanderthal, just to be very clear. Um, the behavior it's a, the of... The condescending... Um, vocal fry of a 12 year old like let's just remember that it's like the behavior of a neanderthal okay <laughs> fuck of, look i think the president uh what what we what everybody saw yesterday was what, what, a reflection what, 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 of uh, um, his frustration and um, exasperation which i think many american people have that um, for almost a year now uh, people uh, across the country have sacrificed. Uh, uh, and many times they haven't had information they need from the federal government. They haven't had access to uh, uh, a greater understanding of what the public health guidelines should look like. Uh, uh, and those include many, many people in Mississippi, in Texas, uh, uh, in Ohio, Florida, in every state across the country. Uh, uh, and, you know, he believes that um, with uh, more than half a million Americans' lives lost, uh, uh, with families that continue to suffer, that uh, it's uh, imperative that people listen across the uh, country, whether they live in a red state or a blue state, to uh, the guidance of public health experts. Uh, At the same time, uh, you've watched uh, the president closely well, for some two, time, Mary, as you all got have. a couple extras He's in there. He's going to engage with and talk with people who disagree with him on a range of issues, including this one. Uh, but uh, he believes that if we're going to get this pandemic under control, we need to follow public health guidelines. He simply has was asked... Uh, ask the American uh, people to abide by wearing masks for 100 days. We're at about day 40. Are we at day 40? Around there. 60 more days. Uh, uh, that's what he's asking. He's certainly hopeful that business... Shut up, Jen Sackey. You lying Sackey. You lying Sackey of shitey. <laughs> Some people, uh, no one is talking about. There is a huge black on Asian violence going on in the states and i would assert that um the asians are not getting the best of that battle um in other words there's a lot of black on asian crime there's a lot of black on jewish crime easy targets sometimes no one's talking about it It's not politically correct. I didn't like the way he looked at me, so I stabbed him with this knife. An Asian man is in critical condition after getting stabbed by a butcher knife in New York's Chinatown on Thursday evening. The 36-year-old local resident was attacked around 6.15 p.m. near the federal courthouse near the corner of Worth Street and Baxter Street next to the blah, blah, blah. (laughs) 
The victim's condition is deteriorating. He is likely to die. I'm not going to play it for you. I haven't watched this, and I'm going to save you from watching it. It says graphic, and YouTube doesn't like it when I play things like that. But nobody's talking about this. Seriously, it's a it's a huge issue. Like, I mean, black crime is a huge issue anyway. Because, well, okay, let's let's look at it this way. Thirteen percent of the population in the states is black. That would mean about six and a half percent of that black population is male because men mainly commit most violent crimes and most serious crimes. It's, it's not sexist. It's just the way it is. It's a fact. And men aged, what is it, 24 to 45 are a great majority of the violent crimes in the States. So, what is the population of black men between 25 and 45 in the States? <laughs> well, if the total population is 3.5% based, or sorry, 6.5%, then you could say, what, 3%? 3% of the population is responsible and guilty of committing a majority of the violent offenses. And I'm talking a majority, not, like not 50% plus one, but like more like 60%, 65%. But Black Lives Matter. So what the fuck? We can't talk about that. And talk about disproportionately representing your numbers. What? It, okay, it, that's racism, right? Because... 3% of the population commits 60% of the crimes. That's that's the white person's fault. I didn't like the way he looked at me. Anyways, black on Asian crime is a big problem as well. It gets underreported, especially in California. Oh, my gosh. And black on Mexican crime, he huge as well. I'm not sure who's winning that battle. I would say probably the blacks. <laughs> It's not, I, I can't even I can't even get around the, the blacks like that the whites it's brutal it's a brutal way to um, I don't know categorize someone Gavin McKinnis pulled this up on his show the other day I was horrified by it but um, sorry I'm not doing a good job at the cuts here I I'm a racist, and I don't want to be. This uh, white guy called the um, authorities on himself, or a t oh, he called a TV station, and said, "I'm a racist, and I don't want to be anymore." <sighs> oh, fuck, bro! Like seriously, you're you're probably not even racist. Okay, so let's hear what he thinks what qualifies as racist. And this poor girl, like, I mean, cute girl, obviously half black and half white. <laughs> and this broke my heart because this this guy thinks he's actually a racist. And, um, well, you, you judge for yourself. Caitlin's struggle made harder by her father's racism. He makes jokes that are not funny. But First of all. What 12-year-old daughter hasn't said this about their father? He makes jokes that aren't funny. Um, that's because he's your dad, and to you, he's not funny. <laughs> I'm funny. He makes jokes that aren't funny. Okay, yeah, all right. So, and you've already said that you've got issues with self-worth, like you're not good enough, but then when pressed further who are you not good enough to she says the white man oh my 
gosh. But he thinks they're funny. But I do say racist stuff. Okay, now he's going to tell you what he thinks is racist. Now, I don't have uh, mixed race children, <laughs> okay? I don't have any children. But if I did, this would be a joke that I pull out all the time. Stuff that I feel bad about now, like I'd make fun of her for um, like dancing or something because she doesn't have to get a rhythm. You up. I'd, say, I'd say stuff like, so that must be the white side of you. Have so she doesn't have that good a rhythm. So because her mother's black and he's white, uh, is he even her natural father? Oh, I forgot. It doesn't matter. Um, that's maybe not funny to the... Ch that, come on, man. I, I don't, like, seriously? That must be the white side of you. Because you got no rhythm. Come on. How does it make you feel? Uncomfortable and angry. It makes me distant. Sure enough, at the next session, while Caitlin hardly says a word, Karina doesn't mince her words. There's nothing wrong with being funny. The question is at whose expense? Humor is going to always be at somebody's expense. Yes. <laughs> That's why it's funny. <laughs> Unless it's a knock knock joke. If jokes are race related, class related, gender related, like should. You know, I always worry about. I don't worry about, but this girl's 12 years old. She's got more facial tics than I've seen, like, ever on anyone normal. Is that not speaking to, I don't know, what are facial tics? Are they habits? Are they nervous things? Not habits. Like, she's on camera, I get it. it. But like, she seems like she's I'm actually being offensive. Okay with it. And I don't care. But isn't it the perception of how the person's taken it? If it has a history of oppression and hurt, that must be the white side of you? Uh, that carries a history of oppression and hurt? Oh, fuck. Where are we going? In this country, I would offer there's nothing funny about it. You know what? That's because you killed comedy, all right? It, comedy's dead because everything's offensive, and we can't pull out the race card anymore. We can't call someone a, one of those fun pet names that is a derogatory, you know, slur on their nationality because ooh racism no just because i call you a racial slur doesn't make me a racist it makes me funny <laughs> and you should send it right back because it's fun i mean this is what boys do okay like at least we used to be able to joke so i need to look at why i think it's funny yes okay but no and why that makes more sense. And why now we're just left to knock knock jokes, like he said. Why is going to Anyways, heartbreaking. That we've come this far. We've come this far. We're more tolerant than we've ever been. We're less racist than we've ever been. We're more loving, more open, more tolerant of different ways of being. For crying out loud. We're accommodating sixty five new genders. Like we We've never been this tolerant. We've never been this open to new ideas. We've never been this accepting, ever. <laughs> We're better than we've ever been. But no, every t oh, the media just wants you to hear that white supremacy is the problem. No, it's not Black Lives Matter. It's not Antifa who rioted for 100 straight days because George Michael Brown, George Floyd, overdosed on fentanyl. A convicted, hardened criminal that held a gun to a pregnant woman's belly while his homies pistol whipped her and then they went on to rob her home. Not, doesn't speak to a good man that was in the middle of a fraudulent act, passing a counterfeit bill, caught with a body cam, a police body cam, with a tab of fentanyl on his tongue. No wonder he was so sketched out when the cops came up to him. And get this, he resisted arrest for a half hour hour they didn't just jump on his neck and suffocate the man he resisted arrest for a half hour he was in a what do they call it excited delirium he's overdosing 
He said five times before they even got him in the cruiser, they got him in the back seat and then they pulled him out the other door before he went on the ground with the knee on the back of his neck. Again, not cool, probably excessive force. I get it. Shit happens in the, in, in the moment of a half hour resisting arrest. He said five times before he was on the ground, I can't breathe. There was no one touching him. He couldn't breathe in the car. There was no one on him. I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Yeah, because you're overdosing, dude. Yeah, unfortunate death. No one wants to see excessive force coming from our police on anyone ever. Inexcusable. Murder? <laughs> I don't know how they get a conviction on that one. Stop doing the crimes and stop resisting arrests. And guess what? You'll live. End of story. <laughs> it's a better time than we've ever seen. And you people want us to believe that white supremacy is the problem. It's not cool. This is pretty funny. <laughs> Puppet Gate. This is from the site Infowars.com. That's Alex Jones's website, obviously. I'm just, uh, where's, uh, where's the clip? Did I play the clip already? Yeah. All right, I'll just give you a little sample. Influential publications in the world has come out in a false report and claimed that a Howard Stern puppet show event last year that was making fun of me was real and attributed the quotes to me that they are now trying to use in court to take my children. <laughs> Infowars.com is tomorrow's news today. <sighs> That's, they don't stop. Can you believe this? <laughs> the Daily Mail d publishes a hit piece article attacking Alex Jones, going so far as to attribute quote from a puppet show and a Howard Stern skit to the T-Rex of political talk. Um, I mean, where do you go? Where do you go from here? When we're at, just so far gone already, is there any hope for us to even come back? <laughs> All right, what else? Mark Dice is a beauty go check him out he's on facebook and youtube almost every day he comes out well weekdays he comes out with a um a new video check out my mark dice uh the washington football team formerly known as the redskins replaces cheerleaders with you guessed it mm -hmm, a covid no a co-ed dance team a covid dance team there it is. This is um, clown town. There's no end to it. Did you see the rocket explode? So here's SpaceX. Rocket comes down. Just a minor flesh wound. Oops, sorry about this. I'm not doing well today. What happened? Oh. How did they re-land these things? They took this thing up 10 kilometers into the air and then brought it back down, and then it blew up on the launch pad. <laughs> <laughs> no one was injured. No one was on board, but this is a spaceship. I call it a rocket, but it's actually a sp spaceship. I guess they call it. What do they call it? Something. Minor detail that has to be ironed out. Good one. Ah, and last night, if you haven't seen it already, I'll force it down your throat. Uh, this is one of the funniest men on the planet. And I've been um, a caller on many a talk show, mostly local. Um, sometimes I get on national shows. I was actually on Larry King's show a couple times as a caller when I was a child, like in grade 10. Not child, but whatever. Grade 10. 10, 11, or 12, something like that. I called Larry King. I got on. I recorded it. I probably got the tape somewhere. I was shaky. My voice is peaking. And um, 
Then I had a pretty successful run as a caller on Tom McConnell's show on 610 CKTB, so much so that I won caller of the year multiple times in a row, and I worked my way onto the station with my own show. Now when I call the station, I talk to Greg, and I go on hold forever, and then I just hang up out of frustration because I guess Tom doesn't want to talk to me. <laughs> I called to wish him a uh, Merry Christmas just before his last day. And I was, you know, I held through the whole last segment while he read a bunch of email and then went to another caller and then ended the show. And you can see I'm on hold. You can see who the callers are. I have a name and a number. It comes up on the board. Well, it kind of hurts. I kind of thought we were friends. But I've lost more than just that. Anyway, last night I... um, I got on. Uh, last night he was taking more callers. So he took calls for almost the full two hours. Usually only does it from 10 to 11. There's so many people calling in that between 10 and 11, it's really hard to get through. Uh, and there's only about 35 lines coming into the board that Ryan Katsu Rivera answers, Asian Pat Dixon. And, uh, but last night I called and I was like the third call. And this is what happens. See, the show host has complete control over the show. I used to love being the show host when I had callers because you can run them anytime. You can shut them up anytime. You can talk over them. You can change the subject. And Gavin does all of that to me. <laughs> Let's see if Jim I can... swearing. <laughs> What's happening here? Fuck off. Jim, you're on the line. Jim, Hi, Jim. Are, Jim you are on the line. Hello, my bedwetting buddy and father felcher of the fat zone. I sent you a oh, link over. Happening? I know you probably don't care about uh, Canadian politics all that much, and I can't really blame you that uh, much, uh, even though I'll probably run as a candidate in the spring if there's an election. Uh, hey, whatever happened to your girlfriend that you're going to marry? He's like, oh, fuck this guy yeah. again. Uh, I might, I might, yeah. Jim? What happened to your girlfriend, Yeah, eh? I might, uh... Uh, I haven't talked to her in a little while. You, I might not be able to collect that C note that you offered up. Um, oh, or, or looks that, like uh, you're not getting married well, after all. Listen, no, I haven't. I haven't made contact recently. I've, I've been a bad uh, uh, online fiance. Anyways, Prime Minister Cuck Trudeau once. Wait a minute. I've been a bad him. online fiance. It's so you a- guys are still engaged in your mind. You just haven't been uh, attentive enough. Well, I don't know, bro. I don't know how to describe it. It's a long-distance relationship. I know how to describe it. Complete bullshit, which is what I called when you first brought it up. (laughs) Anyway, thanks for calling, buddy. (laughs) Oof. (laughs) Oof is right. That's the end. Harsh. That's the end of the free portion of our show, so you can see what it's like. It's harsh. When you pay. This is what happens. Just run me right off the road. He will not let this bit die. It's fine. I think it's fun. It, like, it used to be funny. It's a lot less funny than it used to be. I called in one time. I said, Gavin, it's uh, it's on my YouTube channel somewhere. I'm like, dude, I met this girl online in the YouTube section of one of your, con- of one of your videos. She says, hey, a fellow Gavin fan. I'm saying, hey, that was my mother's name. You're, you're, she had this picture of a George Michael eye from a uh, father figure or something, like the eye of one of the girls, like really close up as her avatar. I'm like that eyes really you're hot (laughs) joking around and the next thing you know we're on the phone on the regular and now uh i've never met the woman (laughs) i have seen about a four second clip of her walking through (laughs) the door of a business complex (laughs) for a promo she did Hashtag Claudia. But now when I call in, I'm going to have to call in and and disguise my voice because this fucking dweeb won't let the bit go. And I, you know, I don't want every time I call in to be about the bit. Gavin. (laughs) Oh, by the way, put my show on your station, Gavin. All right. Babies are racist. Cancel babies. (laughs) That's a great fucking time to get out of here, eh? Nasty Knuckles. Check out the episode that uh, Riley Cote does with uh, Chris Pronger. 
Here's an Ontario Conservative MP calls for the end in the, to the lockdowns, and he wants the entire province in the green zone. Good call, and you'll be looking for a job tomorrow because Doug Ford does not put up with people that dissent. He fires them. And this is the Neanderthal thinking um, quote. Texas, I think it's a big mistake. Look, I hope everybody's realized by now these masks make a difference. We are on the cusp of being able to fundamentally change the nature of this disease because of the way in which we're able to get vaccines in people's arms. First of all, no, the masks are not effective. Or if they were, we wouldn't have seen the spike in cases. If the masks were effective, we'd have it under control now because you've convinced, and Trudeau, have convinced everyone in North America, basically, to wear a mask everywhere they go, even outside. Today, driving through Welland, every, I saw some loser with a mask and a shield walking down the middle of King Street. She looked like a heroin addict. Okay, so (laughs) you're killing yourself with heroin, but you're afraid of dying of COVID. (laughs) Also, Joe, don't touch the mask because if there's an infection in the mask, you're activating it and putting it on your hands and then touching other things with it. You're not supposed to touch your mask and they're single use. You throw them out when you're done. You don't reuse them. When you take them off, you put a new one on. Losers. They don't work especially if you're touching them all the time. We've been able to move that all the way up to the end of May to have enough for every American to get every adult American to get a shot. Who's lining up for this shot? Who's taking this experimental vaccine that has no human trials? They rushed it? Hey, it was a miracle, an absolute medical miracle that Trump got this approved and, and he dismantled all the regulations to get it to the market as quick as possible. I guess... Uh, probably a wise thing to do, but I am not signing up for it. I am not taking the flu shot and I'm not taking an an experimental vaccine. Uh, They're up to 2 million a day now. He promised a million a day for 100 days, 100 million people vaccinated. Guess what pace they were on when he took office? A million a day. Well, that's a great stretch there, Joe. Yeah, you're ahead of schedule. Hmm, Well... You were already vaccinating at a million a rate, a million a day rate when you became president, you weirdo. The last thing, the last thing we need is the Neanderthal thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine. Take Neanderthal thinking. So you're not a Neanderthal. I'm not calling you a Neanderthal. It's Neanderthal thinking. That's like, try this one at home. Stop being uh, no, stop acting like a bitch. <laughs> Try that. Load that one on your lady when you get home and when she's cranky and she's hungry and she's bragging on you for something, right? Stop acting like a bitch. And when she says, don't call me a bitch, I said, hey, d- d- I didn't call you a bitch. I said, you were acting like one. You're not a bitch, but you're acting like one. <laughs> you see how... <laughs> You see how that doesn't work? It's like Neanderthal thinking. I'm not calling you a Neanderthal. I (laughs) said you suffer from Neanderthal thinking. Neanderthals for their time actually were pretty bright. (laughs) I don't know exactly how. (laughs) We always use Neanderthal in a derogatory way of saying like caveman, like old way of thinking, but I mean, they're extinct, so they mustn't have been that bright, (laughs) but still, they preceded Homo sapien, right? Or was that Neanderthal? No, I don't think, was Neanderthal Homo sapien? It was right at the cusp. If it was, if it was, it was right at the beginning. It was one of the first ones to walk up, (laughs) right? I don't, somehow I don't think the Neanderthal is actually Homo sapien. I'll have to, I'll have to do some research on that. Forget it. It still matters. No. I carry a card. It doesn't matter, Joe. What matters is that you have dementia and you're dying 
a rapid death right in front of our eyes. And now that we can't see your stuttering mouth behind that or your twitches, uh, you're all hidden. I hate carving on this guy because it's just not fair. It's it's targeting elder abuse, and I'll probably get locked in YouTube jail for even commenting on this because it's probably false and deceptive practices. The, uh, the man is obviously perfectly cogent. No, coherent. Coherent for sure. What the fuck is cogent? <sighs> That's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> it's ugly. <laughs> it's Thursday night. I usually come out here at 7 o'clock. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I haven't cruised my news feed today. So let's do this. Let's load up some uh, M Factor and we'll go for a little cruise. Peace, love, hug your neighbor, and take that damn filthy, dirty diaper off your face, your beautiful face, that beautiful smile. Show children your expression. Show your neighbors, show the Checo girl your beautiful face. Stop complying. Start defying. It's not working. Think for yourself. Do your own research. I love you. And I am out.
working on Matea Murda for another interview. She stands for women and children. She's bright, beautiful. She's got stones, man. Coming up soon. I don't know. I'm working on it. 